for those of you who have an audience already, maybe you have an email list, a few hundred people, a few thousand people, um, but the, your audience isn't buying from you as often as you'd like, this video is for you. So I have coached so many people like this over the years and there are basically three things that if you work on it, uh, your audience is much more likely to buy your products or your services. So, and by the way, the lighting is a little weird because of um, the, the hazy smoke today. I'm in California and uh, wildfires and things like that. So anyway, three principles. One is reach. Oftentimes, okay, so, so think about this month, what product or service would you like to sell more of this month? All right, got that in mind now. The second question for you is, has your audience seen your advertisement about that product or service at least once on average? Each person has seen it at least once, if not two or three times. Now, I don't believe in the typical rule of seven. There's a typical rule in advertising that people have to see something seven times if they before they decide to buy it. I haven't found that to be true. I think seven is too many. I think three is a good maximum. Um, because if they've seen it three times and they're not buying, it's probably not the right fit for them right now. And if you keep advertising it to them, they, they get ad fatigue, they get tired of it and you, and you start to erode your relationship with the audience. So up to three times, that's it. If it's really a good match, usually most of my, my students and customers, they buy it the first time they, they, they see it from me. So really, if it's a really good match, so, 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 so reach is the first principle. Have you sent an email or, or run an Instagram ad or Facebook ad to make sure that your, your warm audience has seen the advertisement at least, um, at least once, if not two or three times? Okay, that's reach. The second principle is match. Um, have you made sure that what you are selling is actually helping them to solve a problem that they want solved right now? And you discover that by having conversations with them and then by taking surveys of your audience, have conversations with a few, well, as many as you can, but at least three people, if not five or 10, to find out where are they really struggling in their life right now that your business can help to solve. Of course, they might be struggling with many things, but of, of the many things they're struggling with or the various things, what, what, what's one or two or three things that your business is really qualified to help them solve? Okay, because we're, we're all in the business, one, of easing human suffering. We want to ease human suffering as much as possible. And secondly, once that human suffering has been eased, we want to help them self-actualize self, self and transcend, right? So, so you know, so, so that's the second question is match, is are you selling something that is helping them ease uh, the suffering right now? That's something, a problem they really want to be solved right now. The second question, match. And the third question is trust. And this is a really big one. And I've helped a lot of people over the years with this one. Does your audience trust you? There's two questions here. Does your audience trust you on the topic that you're selling? So whatever thing you're selling, have they, have they gotten enough helpful content from you on that topic? Because if they haven't, then they don't trust you to be able to provide a product or service that really helps them with that thing, you see. This is why I talk all the time about the importance of creating helpful, authentic, genuine content to just serve and help your audience, even if they never buy. And this brings us to the second question about trust, which is general credibility. Does your audience trust you as a person? As a business owner, do they feel that you have their best interests at heart or do they feel that they're all, you're always trying to get them to do something? If you're always using calls to action, trying to get them to do this or to do that, to try to, when I say do this, do that, I don't mean to follow some good advice to help them out, but to try to buy something from you or to sign up for something. If you're always trying to get them to sign up for something, even if it's a free thing or, or to, to buy, especially to buy something from you then they, that relationship always feels like, oh, this person's always trying to get me to buy something from them, okay? Especially if the match isn't there. Ah, they're always trying to sell something that isn't the right match for me. But the way you market yourself will, will, will either build, earn their trust or to erode the trust. How do we earn trust? We earn trust by approaching our audience like we approach our friends, okay? For example, one example, I see some people use the word free 
in all capital letters. Have you seen this? Come to my free webinar in all capital letters. It's just tacky. And would you send that to a friend? If you were trying to get a friend to, to do something with you, would you say, hey, Joe, this is free in all capital letters? I mean, probably if, maybe as a joke, but it's not. it feels manipulated. It feels aggressive. It feels tacky. Like, so if you don't do that to a friend, why would you do that to your audience, right? Like, it's little things like this. That's like, well, no wonder they don't trust me because I treat them like I'm trying to treat, you know, some, some, you know, lemmings to be manipulated or something. No, it's like you treat them as friends. You treat them with generosity, without attachment. Whether they ever buy from you, you're there to help them. That's what you do with a friend, right? Now, if a friend is bad to you forever, then <laughs> you might break up. But, but usually friends have some kind of give and take. But usually you, 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 you're a friend with someone because you like them genuinely. You actually want them to succeed. You want them to, to enjoy life. And so you, you, you serve them out of joy without attachment. And that's what we do in content. And that's how you earn people's trust naturally. You don't try to build their trust by trying to manipulate trust. But you just earn their trust because you are a trustworthy person. Because you come to it with with uh, without attachment. Anyway, I'm. I hope this is helpful to you. Um, I'm always open to your comments and your questions below. And uh, I'm George Cow. For those of you who don't know, I'm George Cow. I love talking about this kind of stuff. How do you? How do we grow our business truly from the heart, not just in word and but spiritual or heart based, but truly from the heart that really feels deeply enjoyable to us. So I hope this helps, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks for joining me.